I just like to quickly mention at the start of this video that I am now on Patreon, where from $2 a month you can help support me create more content along the lines of this video. Your support will be greatly appreciated. To find out more, why not follow the links in the video description today and find out what exclusive perks you can receive. Hey there, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to start a new series which will look at some of the awesome things that the Amiga operating system did back in the day. It's just one of the subjects that a lot of people don't really talk about, so I thought it'd be quite cool just to show some of the things that I thought were pretty good about it. So today's video is all about data types. Now this doesn't sound like a particularly exciting system, but imagine that you didn't really have to have a particular version of your software or um, a particular application to be able to open your files just because it was a new format. Well, that's what data types are. They allow older programs that support data types to be able to bring in any kind of picture or text file or sound file and so forth without having to be explicitly written for it. So here we can see that I've been able to load a standard if I LBM image from Dulux Paint here onto Workbench because it has a built-in data type for the if I LBM format. As I briefly mentioned, data types do more than just allow us to look at images, for example. For example, we can easily view, say, for example, a text file in MultiView because there is a text file data type installed. And we can see that here that the data type is set to ASCII text. Pretty neat, huh? So what about something a little bit more advanced than the text file? What about hypertext? Hypertext was a big thing in the 80s and 90s. So this is an Amiga guide file that I'm going to bring up here. And this was sort of like an early version of HTML, if you like. It's a bit limited when you compare it to what HTML can do these days, obviously. But here you can see we can browse around various topics by using a GUI. And again, if I bring up the About requester, you can see that it's an Amiga guide document, all because these data types are installed. So what if I try to open up, say for example, a JPEG image in MultiView? You'll notice that it doesn't actually work. And it's not because it doesn't have a file extension, but I'm gonna to touch upon that in a minute. So here's another JPEG file with a file extension, still no dice. Now what we've got to do is actually install a JPEG data type, and then MultiView or any application that supports data types will be able to load in a JPEG image. So in some instances, you have to install these manually. It's not too difficult a task, but all you've got to do is download the suitable data type, say from Aminats, and here, for example, I'm going to use this JPEG data type, and all you've got to do is drag the JPEG or the JFIF file from the data types folder um, into your devs data types folder like so, and then open up the classes folder, and then the data types folder within that. Close down a few of the windows here to keep it tidy. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on my workbench partition, go to Window, Show All Files in the menu. This will reveal some hidden folders, and uh, you've got the Classes folder there, and you want to double click on Data Types. And then all you need to do is drag in uh, jfif.datatype, and voila, your JPEG will now load into MultiView. So that's all without actually having to install a new version of MultiView or anything. We can load our JPEG image straight onto the desktop. Pretty neat. So, again, we can go up to the project menu, click on About, and again, we can see that this is a JFIF picture, which is another way of describing JPEG. So, yes, it all works, even when we don't have a file extension. So, this is a picture I took this weekend um, in uh, Iwate, where I'm now living in Japan, and uh, everything looks nice and pink here. And it now loads absolutely fine. So, so that is one cool thing that data types can do. But we can do more than just load JPEGs, obviously. We could perhaps load in uh, a GIF image. So here I tried to load in this GIF image, and you can see in the title of the window there, it says unknown data type. So we just need to follow the same procedure again of finding a suitable GIF data type, and just copy the files into the relevant folders as previously described, and load in our GIF image, and here we go. There's a picture of Oscar Soyu Langley from Evangelion. So, and again, we can go up to Project, About, and we can now see that it understands GIF pictures. Pretty neat. Again. <laughs> so, let's load in Nihao Lama, and I'm going to open this. Voila, a full colour GIF image there. So some data types actually come with a nice little installer. So for example, this font data type 
comes with an installer that will automatically put all the files in the right place, um, which makes it super easy. So you don't actually have to do all that um, copying files manually. And here, I'm now able to open up any font that I've got installed on iMeager just to preview what it looks like. So for example, I can load up a bitmap font. So I'm gonna look at the Garamond font here, uh, double click that, and voila, all the different font sizes associated with the Garamond bitmap font are now shown. So a nice way of previewing what your fonts are in the system. And likewise, I can now go and load a outline font, in this case, a triumvirate font, which is basically like a Helvetica clone. And um, yes, this is an outline font, so it's a fully scalable font and it's generated a nice little preview. So data types are for more than just pictures. So how can we use data types perhaps to extend functionality with applications that don't support JPEGs, for example, Dulux Paint? What we can use is multi-view and we can uh, open that up and by dragging and dropping the Eni Asher JPEG picture, we can load that up onto the screen like so. And now I can go up to the project menu having checked that all is okay. You can see that it's still a JPEG image here and just go to project and save as and I can navigate to where I want to save the file. So I'm just going to find the relevant folder and just drag and drop that in there just to select that as my path and I'll just type in Inuyasha here. Again, Yamiga doesn't actually need file extensions so I'm just going to call this Inuyasha. I'm going to close all this down. There you go, I've got a new file there automatically. And all I've got to do now is just double check that this is indeed a if ILBM format. I'm going to go up to projects and about again. Yes, it's an ILBM picture as Multiview refers to it. So I can close all this down. And with Dulux Paint, I can just drag and drop my Inuyasha picture here and confirm that I just want to use the existing screen resolution. And voila, there's Inuyasha on screen in Dulux Paint. So any application that had data type support built in didn't actually need this intermediate step but by using multi-view we can actually extend the functionality of software that doesn't understand JPEG images and this was just a really neat thing about data types on Yamiga. It just allows you to extend the functionality of your applications without necessarily having the support built in. It would even support things like video files, animation files, sound effect files and a lot lot more so a very extensible and very cool part of the Yamiga operating system. It was only included as part of Amiga OS 3.0 and later, so anything from late 1992 onwards, like your Amiga 1200 and Amiga 4000 came with this functionality. So I guess that wraps up this first awesome Amiga OS video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any comments or any memories that you have about Amiga OS, throw them down in the comments. I'd love to read them and hear what you've got to say. But I guess that all remains for me to say is see you soon. Peace! So it's come to that part of the video where I mention that I'm on Patreon. From as little as $2 a month you can get early access to content, exclusive artwork through the post, your name mentioned on videos, as well as tips that I don't publish to the public. You can find the link in the video description below. Your subscription to my channel will also help me ensure that I can bring the latest content here from Japan.